This week I'm trying out virtualization software for my M1 Max laptop running Mac OS Monterey. Unfortunately, the tech preview of VMware Fusion did not go as I hoped, so I looked for an alternative that wouldn't cost me anything. I came across UTM, which provides a decent user interface for QEMU-based virtualization and emulation. So I'm going to go ahead and get that installed, and then we'll take a look at what options are available. And finally, we'll install Fedora 36 and take a look at how that runs within the virtual machine. Now I've opened up my browser to mac.getutm.app so that I can get the software downloaded. Now I do have a couple options here. I can either download the DMG file or I can head over to the Mac App Store. I've chosen to deal with the DMG file, so I've already got that downloaded and I've double clicked it. Here, I just drag UTM over to Applications. I open up Applications and scroll down to UTM and double click. Now I do get a warning there, so just click on Open. And we've got the little menu there, so let's take a look. We've got Create New Virtual Machine, Browse UTM Gallery. Let's take a look at the gallery. Okay, it looks like they've got a variety of operating system images available for us here. Of course, there's some Windows ones, Ubuntu. Hmm. Okay, well, let's take a look at this Windows 11. What do they have? UTM for Mac for downloads, Windows for ARM, Spice guest tools. They provide some instructions on what you need to do. Okay, well, this seems a little odd. Let's take a look at what we actually do for the download. Ah, okay, so it's redirecting us over to Microsoft's website. So we'll give that a moment to load. And in order to get that particular file, you need to be a member of the Windows Insider program. Okay, well, I'm not a member and don't feel like dealing with any of that right now. So I'll just scroll back up here and take a look at my other options. Hey, Ubuntu. I do a lot of work with Ubuntu. So what do we have there? Ubuntu server for ARM. And let's take a look at the instructions for this one. Looks like they've got some uh, guest agent stuff down here. Spice VD agent. Hmm. Okay. Well, outside of this recording, I did try installing Ubuntu and a couple other various operating systems, and unfortunately they just would not boot properly whether I was using UTM or using VMware Fusion. What I did find to work was Fedora 36. So that's what we'll be doing here. I've already downloaded the ISO image for Fedora, so I'll just browse for that. There we go, Fedora Workstation Live and click open and continue. All right, I'm gonna bump up the memory here. I'll give it um, eh, eight gigs. That should be quite nice. And two CPUs, and now nah, let's go ahead and bump that up to four, continue. All right, storage, 64 gig, that's plenty. It's fine, this is a temporary VM anyway. Now in the summary, I'm gonna go ahead and change the name so that I know what VM I'm dealing with here. I can see a variety of summary information down below there. Let's give this a meaningful name here. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we'll save that. We'll take a look at the menu bar, see what's available up here. All right, and uh, Okay, let's just go ahead and run the VM. All right, let's go ahead and bump that up into full screen. Yep, boot menu there. We want to start Fedora. Okay, so this is our live instance there. I'm not even going to bother playing around in here. I want to just go straight to install to hard drive. Okay, obviously I want English. So I'll just hit continue since it uh, correctly detected the proper language for me. Installation destination. So the funny thing here is that it shows the red there, but I guess that's so that you can make adjustments if needed. I'm not making any adjustments, so I just click on done. And now that the button is turned blue, I can go ahead and hit that. Now I have sped this up. It, the process did take just over three minutes there. So I've sped it up eight times so that we don't have to sit here watching the progress bar crawl so incredibly slowly. OK, 
Okay, that's finished. Now, one of the issues that I did have with UTM was just trying to do a restart. It didn't go very well. It would uh, continue to try to boot back up into whatever ISO image was loaded. But when I power off, the CD seems to get cleared out. And we can see here that the eject button is not available there. So now that the VM's powered off, we'll come back over to this other side here and we'll get that powered back on. Let's just double check, make sure the CD is not loaded. It's not, good. And we want to start Fedora Workstation Live 36. Now that's odd that it's saying Workstation Live still. Hmm. Let's go ahead and kill the power completely on this. All right, let's see here. We'll go take a look at the properties of the VM. Make sure that we really don't have that ISO image loaded. It does say empty. See, there's, there's a lot of inconsistencies here. I'm, I'm not quite happy with the user experience. But we'll go ahead and try booting it up again. Okay, got a failed to load information there. Not terribly concerned about that. Let's see whether or not things continue to work. Okay, so it did not prompt us for the live disk again. That's good. Welcome to Fedora Linux 36. And let's go ahead and click on Start Setup. Yeah, we'll just disable those. Hit Next. Third-party repositories. Yeah, I want to get those enabled. Next. I'm not going to connect any online accounts since I'm just testing. So now we've got to create our user account for logging into the machine. Now this user account does automatically get added to sudoer, so that's good. You're able to have your admin access when needed. So set a little password on there. And we can go ahead and start using Fedora now. Oh, wait a minute. Welcome to GNOME 42. All right. Oh, okay. So yeah, with GNOME 42 and this Fedora, it looks like they like to hide the little uh, dock down there. I'm, I'm not quite a fan of that. I actually prefer the way Ubuntu does it where they default it over to the side. Okay, here's, <laughs> here's one of my favorite YouTube channels. The menu here is absolutely delicious. So browser internet access is working just fine here in the VM. Okay, so I've loaded up Terminator. I put in NeoFetch there and HTOP. I did have to install both of those. So my next thing is I want to see how Docker does. Right, so I have a Fedora Linux VM running on an ARM architecture on my M1 Max. So now I'm going to install Docker and see whether or not I can run a really simple Hello World image. Just searching for the right Docker package here to get installed. Seems like each distribution wants to call it something a little bit different. Okay, lots of stuff installing here. All right, let's try installing this one. <laughs> we'll get it sooner or later. Okay, did that work? Hey, it sure did, Docker PS, excellent. Okay, so there's nothing running in there yet. That's fine. We'll just do our Docker run hello world. And there we go. All right, so that's it for this short video. I just wanted to get a, a feel for this UTM software. The good thing here is that I do not rely on my M1 Max laptop for doing virtualization. It is primarily used for general web browsing and, of course, video editing here in Final Cut Pro. All right, I hope you found this a little bit informative. Take care. Thanks for watching.